This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. I'm Chris Saunders. Game six of the Bahamas Governmental Departmental Basketball Association's best of seven championship on the court last night. With their backs against the wall and the Bamboo Shack Cybots ready to celebrate yet another title, the police crime stoppers brought out all the gears and forced a decisive game seven with a 98-93 win. Mark Hanna dropped in a side-high 26. Bernard Bonamy added 19. Dion McPhee had 14 while Vernon Stubbs finished with 11. In the loss, Eugene Bain posted a monster double-double. Get this, a game high 43 points and 20 boards. Down the stretch, Bain was a one-man wrecking crew, but in the end, it would still be too little too late. The Crime Stoppers just grateful to play another day. The game's never over. We was up um, 20 points, I think. And uh, yes, we lose some key um, guys as a result of uh, being fouled of the game, but that's no excuse. That's no excuse. Um, the guys, were, we were getting the foul, we were going to the line, we were not concentrating on our shot, and hence, we allowed those guys to get back in the game. They jumbled on us quick. We wasn't executing our plays, but hey, it all coming down to game seven, you know what I mean? We just got to come ready on Friday, and we just got to come out and play side basketball. As long as we play side basketball, we're going to win this championship for four straight. The Crime Stoppers and Cybots play a winner-take-all game seven tomorrow night back at what should be a rocking AF Adderley gym. Tip-off is at eight. Not a bad way to start the weekend. A special treat taking place today at the Imperial Ballroom following day three of the Miami Heat's training camp. For that, here's Jonathan Benson. Former NBA champion with the Miami Heat, Alonzo Mourning, conducting a camp today for 150 Bahamian youngsters. His message was simple. You see this ring I have on? This is a world championship ring. A lot of hard work, preparation, discipline, tears, sacrifice went into winning this right here. All right? But I want to make a point. Not only did the players get championship rings, but the broadcasters, the team doctors, the team therapists, the team attorneys, the PR people in the marketing department, all got championship rings. So what does that tell you? You can still be a champion regardless if you don't have a uniform on. All you have to do is get your education. Sports Minister Dr. Daniel Johnson was at the camp. He said the main goal was to make this a true national initiative. We did get to invite all of the key teams from the high school basketball championship. So we have kids here today from Bimini, Andros, Eleuthera, Grand Bahama, and of course all around Nassau. And it's just a wonderful time for the kids to see what the business of basketball offers. Um, to, they'll get to speak with some of the players today and talk about how their lives have changed because of sports, opening avenues for them to go to college. Um, and then of course coming out of college with careers and finding a career in professional sports. Coaches and executives from the various associations and federations were happy for the opportunity the camp provided. We uh, have a lot of talented kids. We need them to be able to see that the next level is just a step away. So we really appreciate the invite and I hope the kids take the best from it and see that you know they could actually get their accomplish whatever they want to and, and just being among those guys they should feel like they could do anything. I was just reflecting as I watched the children I really enjoy this opportunity to come to Paradise Island, this, this that's heaven, and then to meet the Miami Heat. Um, Alonzo Morning's effort to really ex expose our children, our students rather, to a high level of basketball. So this is huge. Jonathan Benson, ZNS Total Sports. Hi, right, Jonathan, thanks a lot. The first round of the New Providence Softball Association's playoffs will swing into action tomorrow. In the ladies' opener, the fourth place Bomber G operators will be looking to regain their early season form as they face off with the pennant winning Sunshine Auto Wildcats. Man for man, pound for pound, I think we are quite equal. Uh, even though we may have uh, lost a few of our key members, I think the team can rally around that. I think we're ready and quite capable of giving the Wildcats a good run for their money. And who knows, you know, at the end of the day, we come to bring our A game. The president and vice president of the Bahamas Olympic Committee will leave next week for Edmonton, Canada to meet with sports leaders from 70 Commonwealth countries. And the purpose of the trip is really to assure them that the Bahamas is ready to host the Games next year. 
The hope is to be able to show the leaders that the government is supporting the BOC in running the games as well. It should also be pointed out that the government is taking on the support of the games in such a short space of time. Usually these games is four years ahead in advance before the date, the due date, but the government take it on in 18 months in advance and the game is well on, the, on its way. We have a number, all the 70 countries have confirmed their participation in this game. This will be the largest game ever held, ever, ever held in the Bahamas, and the largest Commonwealth, youth Commonwealth games ever held, because at this stage we're having two new sports into the games, beach soccer and beach volleyball. We are still crunching the numbers, as the President would have indicated. Usually you get these games six to four, in, four years in advance. Um, we have had to host these games in 18 months. So we're still um, in negotiations or, or in dialogue with the Commonwealth Game Federation to make sure that obviously this, to make them as economical but as pleasant as, as possible. And we don't have those final figures yet. I think one of the reasons the, pre pre the president and the, and the first vice president is going to, to Canada is to discuss some of the budgetary items so that we can, um, we, we can present a mature budget to the government of the Bahamas. The 2016 sloop sailing season is winding down. Just one more regatta left, and then it's on to the best of the best. This year we started off uh, by trying to get five A-class boats, five B-class boats, and 10 C-class boats. We have achieved the five A, I think the permanent secretary will make the final decision on the final B class that will come in. Rylan is the last official race for the calendar in selection of the boat of uh, the best of the best. So Rylan will have the opportunity to select the final C class boat. Now, if there is no winner other than the eight that has won already, then the best of the best will go with the eight winners thus far. Because you, you must win a regatta to be selected. That's sports. I'm Chris Saunders. Your final look at weather is still to come.